All right, so in total, there are 11 plants in Subnautica, but only seven of those plants are plants that you can actually eat. So the first plant we got on this list, and it's going to be the, for the worst plant that you can eat in Subnautica, is going to be the creep vine samples. So the creep vine samples are primarily found in the kelp forest biome. For each creep vine sample that you have in your inventory and you eat, they will give you three food and one water. That is the most pitiful, the most pitiful food stats in the galaxy, pretty much. Three food and one water is all you'll get from eating these creep vine samples not saying that creep vine samples are bad overall because the reason that these that these ones specifically the food and water are so low is because this is primarily used to craft uh i believe it's what is it called silicone rubber or something like that something silicone so some of these plants are mainly used to craft items hence why their uh stats are so low so we're going to give the creep vine samples a pass in that regard but yeah creep vine samples worst plant in the game for eating and with that we can head on to our next plant so the next plant we got on this list is going to be the gel sacks now gel sacks are primarily found in the sparse reef and the northwest a little bit northwestern mushroom forest uh i believe they can be found in other places but those are the two main places that you'll be able to find them because they spawn a lot there gel sacks are similar to the creep vine samples in terms of why their stats are going to be so low and that's because gel sacks are primarily used for crafting as well and you're going to use them in crafting aerial gel which you combine gel sacks and ruby to make but looking at these stats of the gel sacks we can see that it only gives us five food and four water which is you know a little better than the creep vine samples gave us with the three food and one water but it's still kind of iffy kind of eh you know as far as food stats go so it's not really a good source of food in this game iffy food source right behind the creep vine samples and with that we can head on to our did i say behind i meant to say right after the creep vine samples whoops with that we can head on to our next um food source or plant whatever same thing so the next plant we have on this list is going to be the bulb bushes or the bulb bush sample it's the same thing all the same little plant and whatnot but bulb bushes are just a tad bit similar to the creep vines and the gel sacks only in the sense that they're used for crafting but they're not used for anything else they're only used to craft one item which is a in-game item that you need to beat the game and other than that you're not going to use it in any other recipe i'm not going to say what the item is just in case you know for spoiler reasons as far as food goes bulb bush samples will only give you three food but they will give you 10 water which is why i put them why they made it above the gel sacks because the gel sacks only gave you four water and five food these two these two plants on the other hand all basically gave us nothing this thing this bow bush sample at least gives us something it gives us an acceptable amount of water and then just some okay food not not even okay food terrible food but an acceptable amount of water and with that we can start looking at the other plants plants that are not grown in exterior grow beds but the plants that are grown in the interior grow beds which are going to be the good plants all right so moving on to the interior plants now we're looking at interior grow beds all these plants are pretty good starting off we're going to be looking at the lantern tree which bleh, gosh i can't speak the lantern tree which is going to give us lantern fruit I already got uh, one off the tree but the lantern fruit whenever you eat it it's going to give you 10 food and three to your water so it's not really good not a good fruit Food, a good fruit. What is a fruit? It's not a good plant for your um for your water source, but it is. It does give you some, you know, again, some acceptable an acceptable amount of food, an acceptable amount of food. Oh my gosh, I can't speak today. So lantern fruit gives you good amount, an acceptable amount of food, but not much for water, which is what the other plants are going to be for. So the next plant we got on this list is going to be the Chinese potato. I think they're just called potato plants. Oh no, just Chinese potato. Potato plants will give us 12 food and three to our water, which is going to be a little bit better than the lantern fruit was because the lantern fruit gave us four water this one only gives us two no not only two this one only gives us one less water but it gives us two extra to our food a good trade-off i would say you get more food for only one less in water but yeah chinese potato gives you a good amount of food good amount of food not a whole bunch of water but we're gonna fix that issue with our next plant so the next plant we got on this list is going to be the bobo tree now the bobo tree whenever we hit it you're not actually gonna get like a specific plant but you are gonna get the bobo tree samples when you hit this thing with your knife and that is what you're going to eat now the bobo tree samples give us eight food and ten water which is pretty pretty good when you compare it to everything before you know you had the the bulb bushes and all that stuff down there and then we have the chinese potato only giving us good food the lantern fruit also only giving us good food but not a lot of water this one gives us 10 water which is pretty pretty good decent amount of water and it gives us a lot more food than the other two but yeah bobo tree super good it gives you a decent amount of water and a decent amount of food for the water trade-off and whatnot so yeah bobo tree super good and let's go on to the last plant 
plant, which is the plant that I think is the very best. So our last plant, our last plant that you can eat and grow in the indoor grow bed, and the plant that made the number one spot going to be the marble melon, which is basically just a watermelon. But the marble melon gives us 12 food and 14 water. It gives us the most food and water, you know, because this one gives us 12. It matches the Chinese potato and food, and then it matches the bulbo tree and actually does one better because it gives us 14 water instead of 10. The only issue with the marble melons when you compare it with the other plants is the fact that they take a little bit longer to grow. But you know, if you can find different food sources and make sure that you have just a bunch of marble melons all growing at the same time, about five, six marble melons is all it's gonna take to fill you up and you can put way more than that in a grow bed. So you can basically sustain your entire subnautical playthrough with your food and water using simply water, not watermelons, using simply marble melons because they give you so much food and water. So they are, in my opinion, the best plant in this game that you can grow. Super versatile, it gives you the best, it's like the best of both worlds in one little plant. Only downside is that it does take a little longer to grow. All the indoor, all the interior plants that I showed just now, they can all be found on the floating island, which is the island that we are on now. So all these plants can be found in the same place, which is super convenient for you. So you just have to go here. The lantern fruit and the potato plants can be found in the Degasi base up here. Marble melons can be found a little in between these Degasi vases. And then the bulbo trees can be found, you know, where you see where you see all these trees right here in between these trees. Like you can see super tiny. I'll probably zoom it in so you can see. But super tiny in between those trees, you'll see some mini trees. And those are the bulbo trees that you can take your knife and hit to get yourself some seeds to regrow them. But yeah, those are all seven plants that you can eat in Subnautica. And they're all ranked based on how good I think that they all are. If you're, if you have a different opinion, maybe like your list may be different than mine, feel free to let me know and share your opinion in the comments. But other than that, that is about all I have for y'all for today. I hope y'all enjoyed and thank y'all for watching and I will see y'all in the next one. Peace.